Welcome guys, this is the fitness testing revision video and this video is going to focus on the methods of testing your body composition. Right, so here's the question that I'm looking for you to answer. It's how do you measure body composition? Or um, another way of putting it is what fitness tests could you use to measure body composition? Make sure that you pause this video before progressing on and write down your answers. So, um, here's the answers. Three nice easy answers really. We've got the body mass in index, BMI. The bioelectrical impedance analysis, the BIA. And then we've got our skin fold tests. Um, make sure that we know all three of these answers. If you didn't get those, do what I've said before. Look, say, cover, right, check. Keep repeating this video to make sure that you do know them. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to break down each of those fitness tests now and we're going to go through all the information you need to know about um, each fitness test for your test. The first one coming up is body mass index. So this is the equipment that you need to complete the test. We've got a height stadiometer here and we've got a weighing scales and those are the only two pieces of equipment that you need. So we've got a four step um, method that you need to go through to complete this test. The first one is measure your body weight in kilograms using the measuring scales. The second one, measure your height in meters using the height stadiometer. Number three is carry out the calculation. Now this calculation is for BMI equals body weight in kilograms divided by height squared basically. And if I was writing this in a maths lesson you'd probably put brackets around the calculation like this and you do that because this bottom bit here needs to be done before you divide the height uh, the weight sorry by the height now this is really important you do the bottom bit um, otherwise the um, calculation won't work and then the fourth step is you would interpret your, your results and you would do that by using the table on the next slide and here's your results so this is the table that you would use. So here we have the desirable, we have the overweight, and we have the obese. Now CDH. CDH stands for coronary heart disease. And obviously that's um, a really severe thing that you don't want to get. And you're at increased risk of getting it if you are obese. So that was the end of our look at the body mass index test. And we're now over to the bioelectrical Impedance Analysis, BIA. And here's a picture of the equipment you need. So, here is the actual box that you would use. Um, and then we've got wires here that then go and connect to pads that put on your feet and your hands. There's some steps you need to take before you actually complete the test. So, the first one is you cannot exercise for 12 hours prior to the test, so no exercise whatsoever for 12 hours leading up to the test. You can't eat or drink within 4 hours of the test, and you can't drink caffeine prior to the test either. So here's a quite long um, method that you need to carry out when doing the BIA test. Um, so the first thing is the participant needs to urinate 30 minutes before they start the test. Um, second one then is the participant lies down and they need to remove their right sock and shoe. And this is so that we can carry out number three, which is to place the BIA electrodes on the right foot, the right hand, the right wrist and the right ankle. Um, you then connect the wires that will lead in from the actual um, main BIA unit to the different tabs on the electrodes and you do this using crocodile clips that's number four you enter the data into the BIA machine so the type of data you'd have to put in is the participants age gender height their weight and um, what level of activity they do the sixth thing is the participant should lie still um, and then a weak electric current is going to pass through their body this literally only takes a second or for two and then the last thing that happens is the percent of body fat actually just shows up on the LCD 
display on the actual machine so you don't have to do anything else after that and then you can use this table to understand sort of what the percentage you've got actually um, relates to in terms of um, ideal slim and so on so here we go so for the males we've got our results for the females we've got our results here it's quite easy to understand here's what the percentage of body fats are and then here's our titles as to what they um, they relate to again remember obese means that um, you've got an increased risk of coronary heart disease and now we move on to our final test which is the skin fold test these are the three pieces of equipment you need you need a pen not 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 a board marker but some sort of pen you need the skin fold calipers this is a good picture of them and you need a measuring tape and here's our method slightly longer one again you keep getting longer with each test so um, the participants should just keep their muscles relaxed during the whole test no need to tense up or anything like that Mark each skin fold site with a pen and use a tape measure to find the midpoint. Um, grasp the skin fold firmly between your thumb and index fingers, about one centimetre away from the site marked, and gently pull away from the body. So literally just a nice gentle pinch. Um, so you place the fin skin fold calipers then um, so that it's able to, to grab hold of the pinch basically is what perpendicular to the fold means. And the dial, the area that you would read it off, should be facing upwards. Um, you maintain your grasp, you keep hold of the skin, and then you place the calipers onto it midway between the base and the tip of the skin fold. So right in the middle of, um, of where you've got hold of. Um, you then basically let hold of the calipers so you don't pull, pull them back at all so that they actually clip onto and hold um, the fold that you've got hold of. Read the dial that says the, the mark basically and how much it's, it's um, clipped onto and then two seconds after you reach the calipers. So we're talking about the actual sites where we take the markers and this is where you would take them for a male. You take them at the chest, here, the abdominal, here, and the thigh, there. For a female, slightly different. So you take it at the tricep, which is the back of the arm. So it's on the arm here, but it's the back of the arm. Superiliac, which is just on the side there, and then again the thigh, there. Right, so although there's a long method for the skin fold, we're not over yet. We still need to process the results and interpret them. So uh, you need to add up all of the skin folds. So the three skin folds you've taken, you need to add those up to give you a number. Then the next stage is to use the nomogram. Now the nomogram I'll show you on the next page is probably the easiest way of doing it. So here's the nomogram. So on this side, you would plot whatever your age is. This side, you would plot um, what the added up scores are for your skin fold test. And then you would draw a line from here to whatever your skin fold is. Let's say it's 75. My age is 20. So we try and draw a straight line. You would use a ruler in your proper exam. And then that would give you your result. Okay. So looking at it, quite roughly, now it shouldn't be done this roughly if you're in your exam, as I said, you should always use a ruler in your exam. Um, it would be around about 20% body fat for a male, and it would be around about 28% body fat if I was a female. Right, so that does bring us to the end of our video. 
Now what we can do, so you need to really master all of the information in this video, it's very very important. Um, ensure you can use all of the information and then ensure you know how to use each of the tests, all the equipment, interpreting the results, everything is vitally important for your exam. Then, ensure you can use the tables to interpret the results from each test. Um, the good thing would be to work out your BMI from family members, friends, anything like that. Um, it'd be a good way to just practice using the tables, practice working out your BMI. Then after you've done that, move on to one of the other videos. Try and learn all the information in one of the other videos as well. Good luck.